somewhere around uh, early February of 2009, I was fortunate enough to be out at a uh, surplus electronics shop out in Portland and um, came across some uh, remnants of the interior pieces of some GE, I think these were master execs, um, these were uh, VHF and maybe a few UHF um, uh, radio uh, pieces, uh, subsections. And the beauty was that uh, um, a number, quite a number of boards had these 11.2 megahertz crystal filters on them. And, uh, well, they're not really filters, they're just dual crystals. But uh, the idea here is that I can uh, go in and do some unloaded Q measurements and find out just you know how good these might be for uh, making some sideband or CW filters uh, for single conversion. Cool thing about those carcasses was that the audio section uh, appeared to be either uh, it looked like a push pull or maybe just a, a complementary pair of TO two twenties just driving off, off to a speaker. It looked like, but it had these three point nine ohm uh, one wattish resistors. So. These, uh, uh, being uh, carbon composition, these be really nice for base to emitter um, uh, stability uh, resistors for some high-powered finals that uh, might be able to fall out of some of this. One of the more profitable parts of this venture, though, was all of the air and, and mica trimmers that I got off of uh, all the um, sub-piece assemblies or sub-assemblies of the uh, VHF uh, radios. And this is a pretty nice uh, handful of nice little uh, trimmer caps. So a lot of these would be good for VFO set caps um, or for coupling caps on coupled resonator filters uh, down at HF. These toroids are uh, ferrites. Probably a dash 43 like mix, um, or possibly a dash 61. Uh, they've got a resistor that runs through them that uh, uh, is parallel across the um, uh, the windings, uh, just to help DQ them for uh, broadband stability purposes. But uh, you know, uh, replacements for these probably you know at least re at the retail level would be easily 50 cents a piece. So this is a good find. I still haven't measured them actually to see. Uh, what kind of permeability they might have, but uh, they ought to be uh, applicable down at, at, at H. Another nice feature of the uh, a lot of the VHF and UHF carcasses is that they've got a lot of these um, axial lead uh, wire wound inductors that um, uh, are worth uh, taking out. And the inductances range anywhere from a few microhenries out to maybe 10 or 15. But uh, a lot of them are um, uh, nice values for um, uh, circuit design applications down at HF, uh, separate from what they were intended for, in terms of probably just power supply uh, chokes for uh, gain stages in the VHF rigs. But uh, these things uh, tend to be pretty pricey when they're, uh, when they're brand new. Not uncommon to spend over a dollar a piece for a decent uh, molded axle. Another nice feature of the uh, a lot of the VHF and UHF carcasses is that they've got a lot of these um, axial lead uh, wire wound inductors that um, uh, are worth uh, taking out. And the inductances range anywhere from a few microhenries out to maybe 10 or 15. But uh, a lot of them are um, uh, nice values for um, uh, circuit design applications down at HF, uh, separate from what they were intended for terms of probably just power supply uh, chokes for uh, gain stages in the VHF rigs. But uh, these things uh, tend to be pretty pricey when they're uh, when they're brand new. Not uncommon to spend over a dollar a piece for a decent uh, molded axial inductor. There were a lot of silver mica caps in um, the carcass pieces, along with uh, the ability to note where some good RF devices were, and there was plenty of TO39s and some TO72s, but all of these came out of the higher frequency RF section, so I know that uh, even if I don't know the part numbers, I know that I've got some high FT devices. And the other nice thing about uh, the handful of stuff that I got there, or box full, was that uh, I got these nice uh, little uh, pre-tinned 
uh, steel enclosures so that I can build a filter onto a homebrew uh, piece of copper clad board and then I have the option of dropping these walls down around it and but still have the lid which is looks more like the bottom uh, of, of, of this box in the picture and the lid uh, pulls off easy without uh, any tools yet uh, offers a nice uh, clean uh, RF seal so that I can do shielding uh, that has a user-friendly nature to it in terms of uh, opening or enclosing. The helical resonator uh, um, coil sections in the uh, front end bandpass filters uh, wound up being these um, sort of plastic-like coil forms that uh, had a just the right amount of wire wound onto them and but had these nice little um, uh, tuning caps, little air variable tuning caps on them just to tune the resonator so I uh, will either just keep the caps or maybe try to see if I can't put these back in, in, in some enclosure so that I can possibly tune these up. Uh, these thing, uh, they, they ought to cooperate uh, for maybe a, a two meter sideband rig in terms of a front end filter and uh, have a maybe a, a better cue than what I could uh, get with just uh, um, air core coils.